You guys are killing my diet. I don't know how we got started on sending candy as bribes to pick locks, but here we are. That's what we're... <laughs> That's the zone that we're stuck in here. These are from Veldmat in the Netherlands. He, beneath this pile of candy goodness, we're gonna have a challenge lock. These are honig drops, honey drops, but they're made with licorice and little bees on there, I guess, to symbolize the honey. And these are original candors. Everybody knows that. Uh, Strump waffles, and they're made with caramel. I've never had those either. And then these are the the baby stropwaffles, minis. So I guess it's when I'm trying to pick this challenge lock. This is uh, Duivel. Now I know I got the pronunciation wrong, but it means devil by, and then Veldmat, of course, is the maker of it. Very heavy, Yale, very durable. And even if this is standard pins, which I know it probably is not, uh, this would be a pretty tough lock. Six pinners. I picked these before. Very, very heavy lock. We have a mummied key as well to go into the typical Yale keyway, but it won't be a typical pick, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, let me go ahead and find a vice, get a mouthful of cookies, and have a go at this devil lock from the Netherlands. All right, let's take another attempt at this devil lock. Everything's locked up. The key is still mummied. I'm going to try top of the keyway, and I'm going to try something a little different this time. I'm going to take my pick upside down, put them all the way in, and push everything to the top. And try to put enough tension on it to seize everything, and then reverse pick it. I'm going to put the pick in the correct way, and then just kind of lightly rake those pins and let off on the tension, and hopefully we'll get the right pin to fall down. There we go. we got a fault set already. If we can do better than that. All right, I can feel some feedback through the pin, so that's probably we are caught up on a security pin. So let's slide it in, see what we got here. Get some feedback. This is normally where everything seizes up. All right, do we have feedback on pin four? Come on, I'm getting ready to lose everything that I've raked in place. Get up there. Okay, we got it, we've lost everything though. Get that pick out. Okay, we got our fault set back. Felt like pin two, so we're on the right track. Can't get past pin five. Getting a little bit of counter rotation off of him. Come on. Oh. Might have just overset him. Oh boy, nice deep fault set. Very deep. You check that out. And this is what happened on the previous attempts. So there's something in there, probably a T pin. Or somebody's done some magic to a core and elongated one of the slots. So I'm looking for feedback now. And I'm getting nothing. All right, I'm going to put a little more tension on the tension wrench. Let me turn this a little more so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here as if I know what I'm doing. I'm getting a little bit of counter rotation there. I'm not sure if that's the core, and if I'm picking on the warding, or if that's true counter rotation. But I'm going to take a chance. It is true counter rotation. I'm starting to get better feel for it now. And it's unwinding everything again. Come on, don't break the pick. Okay. I felt something click, but we still don't have an open. Pin three giving me counter rotation. Man, 
deep counter rotation. Really deep. Oh, we're going to lose everything. I still didn't get it. Oh, we lost it all. No doubt about it. Lost the false set. All right, I'm going to try the raking thing again. Light tension. See if I can rake something back down, I might have overset. All right, we got our fault set back. Not the deep one. But whatever I overset, which was probably pin five, because I blasted right by him. That's three. That's four. Little counter rotation there. And I think we got him, but I just lost the fault set. So let me check these guys in the front. Okay, I got that was pin six. I got the little fault set back. Deep fault set back. Now it seems like pin one is giving me counter rotation. Come on. Again, a very deep one. Lost the fault set again. Crap. This lock earned its name. Oh, man, I thought I had it. We got that super deep fault set back. Again, with a little bit of ro counter rotation there, not much. I'm checking the back. All right, let's go back there. That's around pin. If I can get by three, I think it's on pin four. Very deep spool. Oh, man. I think we lost everything again. Nope, got the deep fault set back. This lock is not talking. Again with counter rotation on four. Thought we picked him. Very slight. I'm going to give him a little extra this time, but I think we've lost our false set yet one more time. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Something about pin four, guys. I tell you. Um, let's see, we do have it. Oh, let me get this out of here. We do have it picked. The Duvel by Velmat. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got here. First, let's take a look at the key. Um, let me cut this off of here. And let's make sure that key works while we still got it in there. Cut this shrink wrap off. Come off of there. This is almost as tough as the lock itself. Two layers. And some cardboard. You didn't want me x-raying that or anything. Man. All right, what do we got? There we go. There it was. Okay, say one, two, three. So pin four was cut very, very high. So that's probably why I was having trouble because the pick that I was using, I think I put my vise on top of it, what didn't have a whole lot of lift. So I was probably in the act of picking him, was oversetting that guy. I think I might have gotten very lucky here. But I will take it. It all counts. All right. Um, find Phillips. Okay. We won't be needing that. Nothing unusual in there. And I think that just comes right off. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock it. Let's try the key. I should have done it probably inside of the lock, but let's do it now. We can still gut it if we have to by take, popping that top off, I think. All right. All right. So it does work beautifully. No snagging whatsoever. Very smooth. All right. Let's find out what makes this lock up a devil. Phillips, again. Get in there. Okay. Try this guy. Make sure everything's oriented correctly. And see, yep, look at that. He did cut those. So we have some elongations and it looks like, we'll pull it out, but it looks like number one and number four, that high cut one has an additional level of evilness in there. It looks like he's undercut. So let's take a look at these guys. Uh, we do have anti-drill pins in here, so very high quality lock to begin with. And then we throw these devil pins in. It's an added bonus. Standard. 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 There better be something in here, guys. Otherwise, you'll never see this video. It's too humiliating. These are all standard <laughs> pins, man. All right, we do have some undercutting here. I think um, we're probably going to find the magic in the... Uh, in the Bible, the driver pins. So we have undercutting here. We have undercutting there. Now you notice he only did undercutting on one side and that's because the lock could only rotate in one direction, in the clockwise direction. So he didn't waste time doing anything on the opposite side. So we definitely have undercutting here. And one, three, four, five, and six, all undercut. So I think we can expect to find some spools for sure in the in the uh, uh, in the Bible. But what interests me is that this is more. I don't know if he slipped here or if this is designed to snag a spool and then trap it. And I think that's probably the intent. That's certainly the way the lock was reacting. All right, let's see what we got here. Stop flapping your lips, Bill. I get it. I get it. All right, there's our spool. So he would be, well, we'll look at him in a minute. Spool would be snagging in that uh, undercut and that little groove uh, standard. And number two, number three, uh, there's that T-pin. Come on, baby, focus for me. There's that T-pin we were looking for. Number four, this is, again, one with the undercut and that little elongation. And so, again, we have nice spool inside of there. Very thin shaft on that guy. Uh, number five, also a very long, thin shafted spool. And the last one, come on, I'm kind of working in the dark here. Another spool, very sharp, but a lot shorter than the others. All right, let's pull some springs out of here just to see if there's any variation. All right, one is a copper, copper. Three doesn't want to come out. Four, copper. Five, copper. These are all the same guys. Move this guy over. And the last one, copper. Where is number three? There's nothing in number three. Let me pop the lid off. I've got a feeling that it's probably caught up when this, in, this, uh, in the top here. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that without too much damage. Come on. There he is. It's true. He was caught up in that. I guess he was pinched up on top. But there he is. Same as all the others. All right. 
let's look at the magic here. This is very well thought out. Enough with the springs, Bill. Let's talk about why this is a devil. All right, notice in chamber number one. Now, remember, this only turns in one direction. Chamber number one, we have a spool. So when the spool gets in there, not only is the bottom of it cut, but if you get it cut just right, looks like this will rotate and get caught up inside of there. So you get a very deep fault set, but you really are going to have a lot of trouble. Now this one is angled. So if that were not angled, I believe there probably would have been no feedback when I really put the pressure on that pin. So if there's one thing I would improve, it would be to make those, those slots beneath that cutout straight instead of angled. Kind of hard to do, um, you know, using hand tools. Uh, number three was a T-pin, so no magic there. Um, I think we did on three. Didn't we have an undercut? It was undercut, so that would be kind of unusual because we had a normal pin in a key pin position and then we had a T pin there. Now why he would undercut for a T pin, I don't know. Uh, number four, again, this one is a little nastier than the first one. It's a little deeper it looks like. And you have the same trap. So there's two possible places to get this lock trap and seized up. Um, I'm trying to figure out if that is an angled slot or if that one's a little straighter than the other one. That one's a little straighter than the other one. So this, I think luck played a big part of getting past pin number four. Perhaps when I was doing that raking thing, I raked him up past the shear line. I don't know, but very nasty, very evil design there. Um, pin number five, let me grab that. I know. Pin five is a little different. He's a very long spool, uh, and we also have an undercut, but we don't have that evil slot. So he'll get caught up, but you're still going to get feedback when you push against him. So you can you can overcome that one. And then the final one, a little bitty short spool. Um, he is undercut. Yep. So you got to deal with that. But again, because it's only undercut and there's no slot to trap him in, if you put pressure on the pin, you can determine he's a spool, and you can get by him. So the two nasty ones, of course, are pin one and pin four. I would imagine if all six of these had some form of trap, this truly would be a very time consuming lock, more so than the three days I spent on the Duivel by Velmat. Nasty lock, very well done. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal. Velmat, thank you, sir, for the many days of entertainment. Great lock, great design. Thanks, guys.